Hello and welcome to this short little video on showing you how to do two population procedures using SAS. So let's go ahead and open up SAS. Again the log screen at the top, the script screen down here, so it's whatever is in this window is what you'll submit in your appendix. Let's go ahead and load the data going to be the stat grades data as expected. We should be familiar with how to do all of this. I'm going to add one more thing. I'm going to create a variable called got pass. And we're going to call it got pass because it's going to indicate whether or not the pr student passed or failed the course. So we're going to call it got pass. We're going to say failed for everyone. Okay, now, when does a student actually fail? Well, the student fails if the grade is less than 70%. So if the student's grade is greater than or equal to 70%, then got pass is going to be value passed. We'll give her a title. Will be grades for stat four zero one three. Hopefully my fingers start working. We'll proc print it. Just make sure everything's done, and end with a run. So we'll go ahead and highlight all this. Run it. Again, remember you can either run it by clicking on the little running person at the top or with F3 on the keyboard. And here's what was printed out. Looks like everything's working right. Student got a 56, didn't pass. Student got a 72, passed. So that's one way of creating, or that's another way of creating new variables or new types of variables for your data set. It's a very handy way at times. So let's get a look at our data. Let's go ahead and say for everything we're going to do today, um, or at least for the means part, we're going to compare GPAs for males and females. Um, so first step, side by side box plot. Remember to sort it first. We're going to sort it by gender. We're going to sort it by gender because our proc box plot is going to be one box plot for males, one box plot for females. And so the form GPA, which is our measurement variable, our dependent variable, asterisk, and then our grouping variable. And as usual, our box style is going to be schematic. That will allow the dots to indicate outliers. And let's run this. And there's our side-by-side -side box plots. Two outliers for females. The little diamond is the, me uh, is the mean. Looks like the mean and the median for females is a bit higher than it is for males. But the question is, is it significantly higher? We can also do the same thing or, or, or look at the distribution of the data uh, using histogram. So here's how to do histograms. Again, we got to make sure we sort it by gender. It's proc univariate. The vari uh, variable we're going to use is GPA and histogram. And since, and, and let's go ahead and, and break it up by gender. So this is going to give us two histograms, one for females, one for males. Here's the histogram for females, the histogram for males. Females look to be a bit more left skewed than the distribution males. We'll find out if that's important. So that was looking at the data. The next step is to actually perform the tests. So we're going to start with a two-sample t-test.
And as expected, it uses PROC t-test. Data stated, the variable is GPA. And if we stop here with just PROC t-test and var GPA, we're going to get the one sample t-test from the last video. But if we specify class is gender, then we're also going to be able to break it up between the two genders and get a two sample t-test. Output is a lot, as usual. Let's go through the four tables. First table gives statistics, uh, sample statistics for GPA for the females. The mean is 3.16. GPA for the males, whose mean is 3.00. Standard deviations, errors, mins, maxes, etc. And also for the difference between females and males. Females are, for this sample, or females have, for this sample, an average GPA of 0.1568 higher than that of males. So first table gives us the sample statistics. Second table gives us some confidence intervals. Uh, for the GPA for females, we're 95% certain that the population mean is between 3.03 .03 and 3.30. For males, we're 95% confidence between 2.86 and 3.14. We can do we have the same information for the standard deviation. For there, there are now two methods for the two-sample t-test. Um, in the handout, I explain what both of these methods are. I'm going to highly suggest that you only use the Satterthwaite, and I give some ideas to why. Um, we, so using the Satterthwaite method, the 95% confidence interval for the difference in means is from negative 0 0.0357 to positive 0 0.3493. Um, since 0 is a part of that confidence interval, we cannot state that there is a significant difference or a detected difference between the mean GPA for the two genders. Here, this third table is a result of the t-test for both the pooled and the Satterthwaite method. Again, I highly suggest using the Satterthwaite method. Degrees of freedom for the Satterthwaite is 97.579. Test statistic is 1.62. The p-value is 0 0.1092. Because p is greater than alpha, we failed to reject the null hypothesis conclude that we did not detect a difference in GPA or in average GPA between the two genders. Then table 4 gives us a statistical test for the equality of variances. It's the folded F test. It's one of the available variance tests. Probi uh, the p-value is 0 .3504, uh, 3503, because that's greater than alpha. We failed to reject the null hypothesis conclude that the, we did not detect a difference in the two variances, the GPA variance for males and the GPA variance for females. Now, as with the one sample t-test, there is a requirement that the observations or the data are normally distributed in each of the two populations. Um, let me emphasize that it's in each of the two populations, not all of the GPAs are normally distributed, but they're normally distributed for females and for males. Now we can do a um, normality test. And again, I recommend the Shapiro book test. Um, notice again that this is very similar to what it was in the last video slash handout. The only difference again is the class the gender is added. We're specifying that we want to break these up, these, these normality tests up along the gender. Again, lots and lots of output. Okay, for gender equals female. Shapiro Wilk test, p value is less than alpha. So we can conclude that the GPAs do not come from a normal distribution for females. Now, if we scroll down for the males, look at the same thing. Shapiro Wilk test, p value is 0 0.0516. That's pretty close. Um, we do not have evidence that the male GPAs come from anything other than a normal distribution. So females were a failure 
in terms of distribution. Males were not a failure in terms of distribution. But both male GPAs and female GPAs have to come from a normal distribution in order for the t-test to be appropriate. Since the females did not, we cannot use the two-sample t-test. So what do we do? We use the mann whitney wilcoxon test. Again, compare this code with its analogy from the last handout. Again, the difference is only the class gender. And PAR stands for non-parametric, one-way procedure. Statistics about the males and the females. Here's the test. SAS calls it the Wilcoxon two-sample test. The test statistic is 2,504.5. The test statistic, for since we were testing difference, it's going to be a two-sided or two-tailed test p-value is 0 0.1085. Since p is greater than alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. We don't have evidence that males and females have different average GPAs here. We could also use the Kruskal-Wallis test, which is a little bit less powerful, but a bit more exact. That p-value is 0 0.1078. And even though it's called the Kruskal-Wallis test, this is actually the mann whitney wilcoxon test. In this box, they were approximations. This is the exact. So p-value is 0 0.1078. Again, failed to reject the null hypothesis. Do not be surprised that this p-value for the Kruskal-Wallis test, the p-value for the t approximation, and the p-value for the normal approximation are pretty close. Large sample size means that those three are going to start becoming closer and closer and closer. And there's our paired t-test. So those were the two ways of testing whether or not the means of the two distributions were equal, or the means of the two measurements are equal. The mean of GPA for males versus mean of GPA for females. Let's move on to proportions test now. And let's look at the pass rate for males versus the pass rate for females. So let's start, as usual, with looking at our data. It's a two-way graphic. V bar, it's going to be vertical bars. And I'm going to group it by got pass. So for those who failed, overwhelmingly male. For those who passed, overwhelmingly female. Just by looking at this graphic, we have an idea that there is a significant difference. The test we're going to use is in some areas called the two sample proportions test. In other areas, it's called a chi squared test. But we'll call it both tables, gender, star, got pass. And chi-squared goes after that, C-H-I-S-Q, because this is a chi-squared test. We get three tables. This will be our frequency table. This will be for the chi-squared table. And the one that you'll want to look at is just the chi-squared. It's the first row. And if you want to, you can look up Fisher's exact test to see what that's all about. The test statistic for the chi-squared test is 27.2403. That corresponds to a p-value of less than 1 in 10,000. Since the p-value is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. And we conclude that there is a significant difference in pass rates between males and females. We have to go to this table to interpret it even more. Of those who passed, so we're uh, looking at this column, and it'll be the third, fourth, yes, the fourth value, the call percent. Of those who passed, 36, 63, sorry, 63 percent were female, and 36 percent were male. If the number of males and number of females are equal, that has meaning. We can look at the row percents, which means that females, of all the females, 93.33% passed. And of all the males, 43.64% passed. 
that's a little bit more meaningful in general terms. Um, the column percents really do require that the number of males and number of females are equal. The row percents do not. And the last test that we're going to look at is the variance test. We're going to compare the variance of males versus the variances of females, GPAs. And we've actually saw, seen this test already. It's back in the PROC T test. This is that fourth table, the equality of variances test. Here, SAS wants us to use the folded F test. The test statistic is 1.32. The p-value is 0 0.3503. Because p is greater than alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. We have not detected a difference in the variances of GPAs between males and females. Now, honestly, variance of GPA, not that important. But variance is also a measure of risk in the stock market. So instead of thinking of male and female GPAs, think of price of IBM versus price of Apple. You would want the, you would generally, all things being equal, you would generally want the lower varianced stock. Here we're detecting that there is no significant difference in the two risks. Therefore, IBM, Apple, doesn't matter in terms of risk between the two. So, I hope this was helpful. Again, take care of yourself. I'll see you in class.